Pitt men's basketball. Oh, yes, they did just take care of business against Tennessee Martin. Could you get excited a little bit about this team? I think you can. Let's talk about why on this episode of Locked on Pitt. You are Locked on Pitt, your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Panthers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Locked On Pit Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Faribaugh. As always, today's episode of the Locked On Pit Podcast is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And how about it, guys? How about it? Pit men's basketball rising from the ashes, if you will. I mean, come on. You and you and I, Mr. Viewer or Mrs. Viewer, you knew coming into this game that you felt that Pitt could lose it. 100 percent You thought Pitt could lose this game. And rightfully so, because look at what has happened in the previous two. Getting blown up by the Citadel, getting blown up by St. Francis. It's been ugly. How about a 22-point victory that was even more comfortable than that set? I'm serious. This was more comfortable than actually just a 22-point victory. A late run aided Tennessee Martin to come back into this one, but it reached over 30 at some points and was about as comfortable a win as you could get on opening night. It dominated this thing. They started out a little slow. They didn't even shoot well in this game. And they dominated this thing. It was an impressive, impressive showing to me from Pitt. And you can't help but be impressed by the cohesion this team showed. I think that was the biggest thing, man. I wasn't sure what to look for for this t- from this team. But they looked like a team. And that's the thing. They didn't just look like individual collectivized pieces kind of running amok and trying to decide how to fit together. This looked like a cohesive unit. Everything they did was with purpose. They didn't play without error. 15 turnovers is not a number you're going to want. Shooting only 36.6% from the field. Again, not something you're going to want. Shooting only 27% from downtown, not something you're going to want. I get it. I get it. There are definitely areas for this pit team to improve upon. But a lot of those turnovers came later in the second half when the walk-ons and other guys came in. And this pit team, the starters in the second half, after allowing eight first-half turnovers, I thought really did a nice job, to be quite honest with you, of kind of battening down the hatches on that front. Now, they didn't shoot the ball super well either way. And I would like to see them do that more. They did that very well in both of the exhibition games and the open practice. But you hope that that can kind of trend upwards, especially because we had heard all offseason that this team was shooting lights out in practice. And that's what Jeff Capel even said post game was that, listen, we have shot the ball extremely well throughout these practices and throughout these exhibition games, and this was like the first time we didn't do that. But they played great team defense, too, and the team passing. I mean, 25 field goals and 21 assists, yes. It's almost a one-for-one ratio. That is gorgeous stuff from Pitt. And listen, I guess it's it's a good place to start here with Nellie Cummings. Let's talk about it. Pitt feels like they finally have a point guard. And this is what we have been saying for years under Jeff Capel, the facilitating, unselfish, great ball general point guard. Xavier Johnson wasn't it. Trey McGowan's wasn't it. Femi Odukale wasn't it. The closest you ever got to it truly at times was sitting in deer or 
it was Xavier Johnson when he was under control, but he was more of a ball dominant guard. A guy that looked to score first. And the cool thing about Nelly Cummings is I get the feeling he has that mode to him. I get kind of this read that Nelly Cummings has the ability to be that ball dominant guy and score a lot. I don't think he has to be. I didn't shoot well from the floor today. 2 of 11, 1 of 8 from downtown, only 8 points, but 7 assists. Only 2 turnovers in 28 minutes. He was fantastic, great on defense. He was awesome. He was awesome. Plus 18 when he was on the court, man. He was dynamite out there today. Nelly Cummings looks so comfortable just dribbling and driving off screens and just dinking it down low. We we saw so many alley-oops today. We saw so many just passes out to the wing and, and out to the top of the arc, and it was unbelievable. It was truly unbelievable how much good ball movement we saw today, not just from Nelly Cummings either. Burton, Sabandi, Elliot, the big men. It was incredible. Jamarius Burton, too, man. I, I got to give it up to Jamarius Burton today. Again, not an efficient day for him. From the field, three of nine. But five rebounds, seven assists, two steals. Yes. Yes. Jamarius Burton made a nice, nice pass out to the wing to Henson on one point. Made a few dishes down low. This was awesome. Fede Federico had a great game. I did not expect this to come out. Fede Federico, man, and all year, all year we heard about him. Oh, he is a raw Juco guy. Well, turns out he probably is that. But I didn't know the raw Juco guy also meant he could give you quality minutes at the five. I think we all took raw Juco guy, good athlete, could be a rim runner that dunks as, well, that guy's going to end up not playing this year. This guy's not going to be a factor. Well, clearly, even when John Hewley comes back, he's going to give you good minutes at the five. Is he going to be all world? No. I think against better competition, you're going to see him to be exposed a little bit more. He's a little bit slower to react defensively, but he's a good rim runner. He's a really good guy that can just has the hops to dunk. He's got great hands down low, short hands. So you know when you get it to him, he's going to finish. He's just a reliable backup five. And that's something that hasn't had. He's a good rebounder. Seven rebounds today, three blocks, 13 points. Really good day for Fede Federico. With no John Hughley. And that was really awesome to see. Because I didn't know what to expect from Fede Federico. But, man, he was fine today. Fine today. Playing really, really well. And, and so, you look at this game and you can't help but be a little excited. And there's so much more that I want to talk about. And we are going to talk about it, including Blake Hinson who looks to be a revelation for this pit team. But first, want to let you guys know about Nissan, because, folks, this week's thrilling moment in college football is brought to you by Nissan. The thrilling designs behind the new lineup from Nissan are intended to empower drivers and vehicles as capable as they drive themselves. When I think of unbelievable abilities on the field for this week's thrilling moment, folks, listen. It has to be Deslin Alexander's sack on Carlos Del Rio Wilson. Just unbelievable type stuff from him. You look at him fighting through the tight end. Great bend on the dip and rip. Deslin Alexander played a phenomenal game. And so you have to look at that one as the number one thrilling moment of the week. This segment, folks, has been inspired by the thrilling new designs from across Nissan's new lineup of vehicles all right everybody let's talk more about this win because 
you look at Blake Henson, and he was maybe the story of the day as an individual player. Man, <laughs> unbelievable stuff from this guy. I was shocked to see Blake Henson do as well as he did against Edinburgh when I watched that game, and he was just shooting threes, and, and it was unbelievable. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, but he was so good in that game that I started to believe that they had something in Blake Henson, and then he comes out and does what he did, to, did today. Super efficient from the field. 9 of 18, 4 of 12 from downtown, 13 rebounds, a double-double. Incredible. 27 points. He has a great jump shot. His defense is super there. Man, this is a guy that is just heady. You can tell he's got eyes in the back of his head sometimes. He's making all the right reads. I mean, he is so good at just doing basic things down low. He has been awesome. Blake Henson has been really, really good. I've been very, 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 very impressed from what I've seen him. Just good screens. He's got vicious screens. He plays with a great physicality. High basketball IQ player. Good passer. And, man, Blake Henson put it all together today. Complete game from him. Complete game. The defensive end, I think, is going to go under the radar from him. But I thought he was awesome. I thought he was awesome in that regard. Then you kind of look at Greg Elliott. I think you have to look at Greg Elliott. Because 11 points today. Drills three threes. This is a guy that to me looked just like the sharpshooter you thought he was going to be. Catch and shoot guy that brings magnetism. Does a great job of on ball screen defense. And he was rock solid today. And people had to kind of respect him at all times. You could see them cheating out for him, and it opened up lanes for guys like Federico. And you had the drive lanes from a guy like Cummings open up because Greg Elliott was that kind of guy that was an issue. And then they started to not respect him. That's when he started to drain threes, and right back to it they went. Right back to respecting him. He was a guy that when he was on the court – you had to respect, and that was really, I think, something that kind of changed the game a little bit and changed the team. And then you you look at Nike Sabandi, the hustle this kid played with today. Wow. Nike Sabandi, man, didn't have a super efficient day from the field. Two of eight, two of five from three-point range, but he fought really hard. He competed well. His effort was unbelievable. Gave them 16 quality minutes. Just 16 hard fought for solid minutes at a consistent level. This guy was like a beacon of light throughout this entire game. I thought he gave them a lot of energy and I thought his athleticism changed the way you got, you could run your sets and, and your penetration ideas. Uh, I just thought it, it was much more efficient when he was on the floor as a team overall, even though he himself was not efficient. And then the Diaz Graham twins, there were certainly ups and downs from these two, but you know, <laughs> you looked at the Dikembe Mutombo finger wags. You saw these guys just have this beacon of energy. I, that's one thing I keep coming back to in this team, the beacon of energy, man. These guys played with such high octane energy. They looked like they wanted to play for each other. They were happy for each other. And that's a basic, basic fundamental thing of every team sport. But we have not seen that at Pitt with all these team chemistry issues in the past. And so it's huge. And, and Jeff Capel said it kind of came organically. They didn't do anything special to let it happen. These guys just kind of gel together. And I think that is the 100% key for what this team looks like right now. They look like a cohesive unit. And the Diaz Graham twins added to that. Not quite sure they're there yet, but boy, they have promising qualities about them that make me believe they could be legitimate parts of this team in the future. And they just got all around solid minutes from most of this team. 
It was awesome. It really was. It was great to see these guys play as a cohesive unit, play with high effort, and play with great defensive integrity. I mean, Tennessee Martin shot only 16% from yard in the arc, 3 of 19, only 20 of 62 from the field, 32%. They forced 17 turnovers. They out-rebounded Tennessee Martin by 10. And a lot of these stats look worse if they keep their starters in throughout the whole game and don't pull them over that last six or seven minutes or so. Pitt really dominated this game. It, it wasn't in doubt really ever. It felt like Pitt was clearly above the level. And, and again, it doesn't mean Pitt's necessarily back or anything, but it's a step in essentially healing a team that has gone from what looks like a rebuild to just a build at this point. It, it looks like a team that you kind of have to rise out of the ashes with a new identity. And, and I think this could be the identity. They shot 41 threes. If you can shoot that many threes and play really good defense, I think Pitt could compete with a lot of teams. They have a real test against West Virginia on Friday where we'll learn a lot more, but I think you take a lot away from that positively. So so how do you readjust now kind of into the frame of mind this season after this game? Uh, let's talk about that. But first, folks, I want to let you guys know about Bet. On a line because betonline.net is your number one source for your sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Folks, you can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball, soccer, esports. They've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at betonline as well. Folks, they're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting information and fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. Bet online where the game starts. All right, everybody, let's talk now about pit men's basketball and where they kind of stand. So a lot of people will use this to validate their feelings, especially if they were believers. I was more optimistic than most. I feel like my prediction in the season preview video yesterday was 17, 14, 9, 11, 10th in the ACC. I thought that was coming more optimistically than most national experts. I think locally, there's kind of a feeling of more optimism around this team. They feel like a more experienced group. They feel like a group that has been there, that has kind of done that a little bit, and so they feel more battle-tested. And I think you see that a little bit with this team. But, and I will say this, you do have to kind of tone it down a little bit. You have to tone it down in terms of expectation. It doesn't suddenly mean Pitt's going to the NCAA tournament. But there are baselines that Pitt hit today that are good. They looked like a team. They had good ball movement. They were good rebounding. They have Depth, that is huge. This team is going to be legitimately deep this year. And we saw that at times where they could mix and match lineups and change different looks. It was different. Now there are issues. I thought at times they got careless with the ball. 15 turnovers is still too much. And the eight first half turnovers for me is still too much. And we're going to figure out how much of an issue that is when they face Press Virginia Bob Huggins is going to test that. And Tennessee Martin tested that a little bit this year, too, because they came up and played Pitt aggressively right away. And so Pitt essentially got a little taste of what they're going to get on Friday, right? I think they need to be better just from the field. There were a lot of really good looks in this one that didn't go in. And some of them seemed like bad luck on the three-point shots. I mean, really, it was just going in and out. It should have been shots that went in. They were good looks. Pitt got consistently good looks in this game. And I thought that was a big plus. 
because overall, Pitt consistently stuck up to a standard of ball movement, screen activity, getting easy looks down low, but they never quite ended up making all the three-point shots they probably should have made. And so what about actual shooting from the field? Things like that. Pitt's going to have to hit some of those shots against better teams. And we're going to find out if this team is just maybe a streaky team, if they had a bad night uh, tonight, or, or what happened. We're going to learn about this team more and more as we get to see it. But that's a preliminary concern. I also don't think it's a super athletic team. I think that is something that I noted in this game. I never truly felt much like they out athleted Tennessee Martin. They did at times, but I never thought it was overwhelming. And against ACC teams, I'm going to bet they will face some teams that are more athletic than them. And so I didn't actually take that away from it. And maybe that can hurt them a little bit. But Pitt's pretty good in transition, both offensively and defensively. If tonight's any indication, of course. I I will also say this. This was the best I had seen them play defensively. In the three viewings I had seen them, Jeff Capel said it was the best they played defensively out of any meeting they've had this year. At Edinburgh and Clarion, they did allow penetration to more athletic, smaller point guards who were then able to kick it out and during some threes. I thought that there were some good opportunities here in the second half that Tennessee Martin didn't hit. And so I look at that and think maybe teams that can shoot the ball a little better can give Pitt trouble. Um, But Tennessee Martin couldn't keep up with Pitt's ability to kind of shoot it from beyond the arc. So I'm interested to see when they face a team like that. But Pitt's physicality... Is going to be hard for teams to match. It's going to be a real grudge match. Um, when you look at that West Virginia game, it's going to be a real kind of slimy, grimy, dirty game, and that, that's going to be a fun one to look at. But then you look at the team overall, just how cohesive they look and how much of a unit they look like. No miscommunications that I can remember from today. There's just general kind of early sloppiness that you see from pretty much every team in college basketball um, on those, some of those turnovers, you know, errant passes that maybe you're just a little too behind some guy, uh, stuff like that. I would like to see that cleaned up and then to get a little bit more efficient from the field, you know, 11 for 41 from three point range just isn't going to cut it in most games, but this team in general, I think is going to have the ability to, to mix and match a lot of lineups, to wait a lot of storms, and I think they're going to be able to keep most games close. And so I think they're going to be able to compete with even some ranked teams they'll face this year. It looks like a good, cohesive team. It looks like a team to me that can take kind of that next step and be competitive, right? But they look competent today. I think that just says so much about it. I just think that says so much about Pitt and where they are right now. Because I can say so much about it. But Nickel States, the Citadel, St. Francis, this was nothing like those games. This was a consistent effort. This was an effort that looked like Pitt was on a different plane than Tennessee Martin, which they should have looked like. And that is a first step in rebuilding this thing because that is a step they have not cleared very often. And so them even getting there, it's exactly, exactly what Pitt has needed. It feels like they have a lot of pieces they haven't had in the past. We'll see how it all kind of ends up hashing out, but... I think you can be optimistic about this team. You don't have to get into the sky yet. Let's see how they perform against West Virginia, Michigan, other teams that they will face this year. But I think right now, you're grateful to be optimistic about this team's chances. All right, everybody, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll be talking about football. Dayon Hayes is suspended. Their winner over Syracuse, where they go from here, and so much more. It's all coming up on the next episode of Locked on Pit. Folks, as always, thank you for listening. As always. Hail to Pitt.